All right, I am building my individual frames from my storyboard sketch in photo P. And I'm going to the last layer, selecting the empty space around because the magic wand is very good at selecting empty space. Then I'm saying select inverse, which selects the original square. And then I go back to my background and I move that selection square. So I keep the square the same size to the next panel. And I hit command J to make it its own layer. Then I do the same thing all over again. Select inverse. Move that selection. Hit Command-J. Same thing again. There's going to be a lot of repetition in the animation sequence, but the important thing is that you understand what each step does. And you do kind of have to pay attention to it. It can be tedious. It's one of the reasons I don't work as an animator. But it is fun to learn. Ah, I didn't do select inverse that time. You see, if you lose focus, then it takes more time. Go to the background and then command J. Then I'm going to save this one. So I want to save as a PSD. It's going to go to my desktop, command D. This is just because I opened it from something that was already on the computer. If I was just creating it from whole cloth, it would um, go to my downloads folder. I'm going to call it photo P. Once I have saved it, I'll see it on the desktop. There it is. I'll move it into my folder. So I have a, a Photoshop version and a photo P version. Pretty much identical so far just so I can show you the differences in how animation tools work. Okay, the next step, I'll go back to Photoshop. We have to stack all of these together like they're a flip book. So what I'm going to do is bring my guides in. I bring guides by having rulers turned on. If you don't see the rulers on the side of your, of your window, hit Command-R. That will turn your rulers on and off. It's just like guides. They're all under View. Guides and rulers can be very helpful in animation because you want things to be uniform. The only, the only movement you want frame to frame is the movement you control. So I'm going to draw guides into the corners, just that corner. And then for every layer that's not layer one, I'm going to use my move tool and slide it right into that guide until it locks in. And I'm just turning the eyeball off so they don't get covered up by the other layers as I go. I'm even going to do that with the middle ones. and the bottom ones, because they all need to be in one stacked flipbook. So each animated frame needs to be its own layer or collection of layers. And we stack them all up. Once they're stacked up, I'm going to turn them all on and I can see that some are bigger than others, right? Because I drew a new square each time. So this one's quite a bit bigger. So I'm going to hit Command T and in Photoshop now, new versions of Photoshop, you don't hold down Shift to lock proportions. Instead, it automatically locks proportions. You hold down Shift to allow it to warp. But since Photo P is based on an earlier version of Photoshop, it doesn't have those same limitations. 
or the same uh, setting. So I'll show you that difference. Okay, now I've got them basically all roughly the same size. And you can even imitate animating them just by clicking on the eyeballs. Because all animating is, is programming the timing of when you see what assets. So it starts out, there's my character, the character moves, my character starts to harden, a crack forms, it goes all the way to the bottom, it starts to open up at the top, a new character starts breaking out, that new character grows and starts to move and, and shuffle the other pieces away. So that's my animation. How do I actually make it an animated file? Well, first, I don't need all this empty space, so I'm going to use my guides again. I'm going to find the square for my first layer, and then I'm going to crop down to those guides. So now my animation frames, and I can delete the background. I don't need the sketch anymore. My animation frames are all stacked up on top of each other. And then I can see if any need to be grown, like this one needs to be grown to fill it. This one needs to be grown to fill it. So Command T. That one needs to be grown. The whole bottom row I, I sketched a little small. Again, trying to make everything fairly uniform. And I can grow each of these. You see where the black box is? I can use com Command T and grow them so that the black box is just the top and bottom. So we don't have all the, the little notes in the, in the gutters of the storyboard showing. We want everything to appear in our square format. So remember, I'm in Photoshop, so in order to keep the proportions locked, I don't hold down Shift. They are automatically locked. I can hold down Option if I want to grow it from the center. Oh, somehow I got on the Crop tool. I don't want the Crop tool. I want Command-T, Transform. So I can hold that option and it will grow from the center, but it will still lock proportions unless I hold down shift. Control T. I don't know why we're seeing multiple transform boxes. Photoshop has, in this new version, has little glitches still. Which is why I wouldn't usually jump to Photoshop CC 2021 so quickly, but... It's nice to have them iron out some of those glitches. And if I hold down Shift, I can actually stretch it. There we go. Okay, so now everything's a little bit cleaner for my animatic. I'm using that square in a way that makes sense for each frame. We want to make it uniform. Animatics are used professionally to pitch an idea whether it's a special effects sequence, an action sequence, a commercial, you know, anything before it goes into full production is going to be mocked up. First with storyboards, and then if they're kind of movement-based sequences with animatics. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and save that. I've got all nine frames lined up in a square. Save my work.
Notice how different that is than the original storyboard sketch. Now I'm going to do the same thing with Photopea. Just to review, I don't need my background layer anymore. I can delete that. I'm going to turn on my rulers with Command R. And then using the Move tool, I'm going to move guides to the, just the very corner. And I'm going to push all of my squares. These squares are all the exact same size. And I'm going to push them all into that corner. And you can see the little red that happens when you've locked it in. And I'll zoom in so you can see it a little bit better. Lock them up against the same side. Even though I selected them all with the exact same square, it doesn't mean my drawings were all the same shape and size. And now, once I've done that, I can move my guide and then crop it all down to that square. Again, it should match the guides. Hit return. And now I'm going to grow each one using Control T. That's how Photo P is different than Photoshop. Instead of Command, it uses Control for transforming. Control T, but this time I don't hold down Shift and it will warp. If I hold down Shift, it will lock its proportions. Control T. I've been wanting to do this for a while, just show you side by side the differences between Photoshop and Photop. And animation is, is where it's most, they are most uh, differentiated. Up, oh, I always do that. Knock Command T. That will open up a new tab in your browser. Control T to transform. When you're in Photop and not Photoshop. And I'm just going to stretch it so that the my black borders are on each side a little bit. So, so far, so good. Control T. Hit return. Control T. Control T, not Command T. Digital artists often have to be really flexible, working between different programs, different studios, different tablets, different setups of those programs. Because if you try to control everything, you're just going to be very frustrated when things change with new new versions. So you're always having to adapt, and that's a strength of a good digital artist, to be adaptable. And it's very convenient to be able to use Photop anywhere you have an internet connection, and to be able to save them as PSD files. Because then you can bring that PSD file and use it in Photoshop. So it's a tool I, I want you all to be very aware of. Even if you have Photoshop for yourself right now, you might not always want to pay the subscription every month. So it's good to have options. All right, so now I've got it set up the same way in both programs. I'm going to save this. Save it to the desktop. And then I'll just move it at the end and overwrite my old one.
Okay, now this is where they diverge.